Chapter 1 introduces this concept of abstraction. Abstraction is one of the big ideas in computer science. And you're going to see examples of, of abstraction throughout the textbook. We use abstraction to help us simplify things, to make it easier to write our computer programs. So abstraction, what is abstraction exactly? It's a, a mental model that's going to help remove the complex details. Now you've probably heard of abstract art. Pablo Picasso says art is the elimination of the unnecessary. So two things about abstraction is that you're going to remove detail. So you see here on the left um, a painting by Henri Matisse and a lot of details left out. But what that allows you to do is to focus on one or more properties so that other properties you're not addressing right now, you don't have to think about. Okay, I can still understand what's going on with Henri Matisse's painting here even though there's a lot of detail left out. Uh, let me give you an example. Suppose you're planning a wedding. That's a very complex thing and that's what abstraction is about is, is trying to take something complex and make it simpler. So if you remove some of the properties and just focus on one or two properties and get that solved. Okay, then you can add more properties. Before you know it, you've planned the wedding. So I'm going to remove all details from planning the wedding, except I'm going to focus on my cake. Okay, so now I don't have anything else to think about but the cake, and I get that done. Then I'm going to add, I'm going to go over to this other property. Let me think about who's going to be in the bridal party. Okay, and that can be done. And you see as you keep adding your properties, <clears throat> you've got your wedding planned eventually. Very complex thing. Another thing about abstraction is this concept of generalization. For example, I would like to see the properties that are in common. So I can see my dog Tinkerbell as an instance of a dog because all dogs have some things in common. Um, so here we have a map of Blackhawk College. A lot of detail has been removed. For example, you can't see where the networking lab is at. But the purpose of this map is to see what rows will be closed and what dates they will be closed on. So we really don't need the information of a complex map that shows where the networking lab is. So this is an abstraction of the college. We will be doing detail removal in programming. So you will want to write a project to simulate a real world situation or play a game. And this is actually a, an abstraction of that real world situation. Abstraction is the idea that you focus on the essence, the cleanest way, and not get into the details too much. Okay, let's talk about generalization also, and here's some examples. So let's say I have a farm, my farm has chickens and horses and dogs and bunnies, etc. And you need to give instructions on how to feed the animals. Okay? So here's my instructions. To feed dog, put dog food in dog dish. To feed chicken, put chicken food in chicken dish. To feed rabbit, put rabbit food in rabbit dish. Now suppose I ask you, what would you say then, what would be the directions to feed a horse? And I would imagine you would say to feed horse, put horse food in the horse dish. And I think you can see the general statement here, the general instruction to feed some animal. You're going to put the animal food in the animal dish. Now what we're going to find out later is animal in a computer program is going to become what we call variable. And so what animal are we talking about now? Cows. Okay, so now we're going to plop cows there in that statement. In programming, have you ever noticed in Windows there are some common features? And one common feature is this right here, okay, at the top corner of a, a window program. And uh, Here's how I close it, for example. Here's how I uh, put it in the status bar or minimize it. This actually
actually, I mean, we use it, but you could think about it. There has to be programming instructions that make that happen. So does each person that wants to write a Windows desktop application have to write that instruction? Well, with generalization, the answer is no. In fact, Microsoft, if you're using Visual Studios and you're creating a desktop application for Windows, Microsoft's already written all that code for me. And they let me reuse it. I don't even have to write the code. So that's the good thing about generalization. If you can see a pattern among things, you can find a way to write your code one time and reuse it. Reusability is a big concept in computer programming, computer science. Over to the right, you see something called a function machine. So a function is a way that we in computer programming get to reuse our code. So for example, let's say I need to calculate how many years before someone is 100 years old, okay? So um, I could think of everybody's possible age and write an instruction, okay? Such as if you're 21, it's going to be what? 79 years. If you're 22, it'll be 78 years. If you're 23, it's going to be 77 years. You see, I will have to have a lot of instructions to get this done. Or I could write a function in which you tell me the age as input, 21. I'll tell you how many years to, before you're 100 as output, 79. If you, okay, if input is 30, output will be 70. And my function machine is going to take x, which represents your age, and subtract that from 100 and give you the answer, f of x. You may have seen this, something like this, in algebra class if you've taken algebra. Another concept with abstraction are models. So we try to model, we use models for the real world. So you've probably heard of um, maybe at an auto company, um, an auto engineer, automobile engineer will create a model of the car that's in development. And so that model, okay, is, is rep a representative, is an abstraction of what will be a car somebody's going to buy eventually. So the principle of substitution asks questions about the model. So they build the model and they're going to ask a question. You know, what's the aerodynamics of, the, of this car going to be? So by asking what's the aerodynamics on the model, it's going to help them answer the question what, what the aerodynamics on the future car that will be built that maybe I will buy will be. Okay. Another thing is, here's maps. Maps are a model of a real city. So here's, here's a, and you can focus on different details. Again, detail removal. So this map here is a map of Moline School Districts. And I can see if you live here, you will be attending Hamilton. If you live here, you'll be attending Butterworth. And that's what questions this properties, this map answers. It doesn't answer where City Hall at. There's another map that shows some restaurants in the Quad Cities, in Moline, Quad Cities itself actually, and here's a little legend. And you can think of this legend as being a language, okay, a language that is um, applied to this abstraction. Here's another abstraction, music. If any of you are mu musicians, you know that there are symbols. And these symbols are abstraction of the music. And these symbols, when applied, become the music. So to wrap it, this up right now, I'm going to see talk a little bit about where we're going to see abstraction coming. So real soon, you're going to see that there are binary numbers. And these binary numbers abstract, they really are, in the end, electrical signals in the computer. Believe it or not, binary numbers on a DVD are pits that have been la that a laser has burned onto the DVD. But we represent them, we abstract them as binary numbers. So they end up building songs and movies, and we'll see how that works in the next chapter. Simulations and models are an abstraction. Someone waiting in line at a bank 
that waiting in line, that line is called a queue, becomes a model for the print queue. And when you enter your URL, say http colon slash slash www.bhc.edu to view a web page, you are hiding a lot of detail. Okay, so there's protocols that are being used. There is how does it find the server, that the DNS and all that. A lot of detail and complex things are being hidden and all you need to do is enter that URL. So that wraps up what we're going to talk about for the introduction of abstraction. But we will be covering abstraction throughout the semester.